Pain is really difficult to measure in young babies and fundamentally it's difficult because babies can't talk. If you or I were in pain, we might be able to go to the doctor and tell them where the pain is, we could tell them how intense it is and whether or not if they gave us drugs they were working. But of course a baby can't do that, so instead if a baby's in pain they're much more likely to cry, to kick around their arms and legs or indeed they can make facial expressions that, um, like facial grimacing to try and communicate that they are in pain. However, there's a fundamental problem with some of these measures. They're not very sensitive because, of course, these are the kind of things that a baby would do anyway. So, in the absence of language, when we think that one of the best ways of trying to have a surrogate measure of pain is to look at pain-related brain activity. In this study, there were 72 babies who were in the neonatal care services. Most of these babies required a um, blood test to be performed as part of their routine clinical care. We were able to use some brain imaging measures to see what happened in the brain following um, these blood tests. In particular, we wanted to try and compare the way their brain responded to something painful with other types of stimulation. For example, um, how they responded to a flash of light or a loud sound. In this particular study, we tried to make a template of this activity so that we could accurately quantify the amount of activity that was taking place. And this is really important because if we're able to get an objective measure where we can quantify the pain-related brain activity, then we can start to look whether drugs such as morphine or paracetamol or local anaesthetics um, were effective. And of course, this is particularly important because some of the babies in the neonatal unit can have many painful procedures per day. On average, it's thought that they'll experience 10 or 12 procedures. And indeed, the youngest and the sickest babies can experience even more procedures than that. So finding effective analgesics that can be used in the infant population would be really important what we were able to show in this study is that when we used these measures of brain activity um, that they were sensitive to being given analgesics. So for example, some infants who needed um, a blood test had local anaesthetics um, placed on their body. And when a painful stimulant was applied to that area of the body, um, they had a smaller response than when it was applied to the untreated skin, suggesting that these measures can indeed tell us something about the um, efficacy of the drug that was being applied. Now that we've developed these measures, we're hoping that they'll be able to be used by us and other groups in order to better understand the development of pain in infancy, but also to improve treatment. One of the interesting things to do would be to try and actually use these measures for individual pain assessment. At the moment, the measure hasn't been developed to be able to do that because it's just not sensitive enough, but it's certainly something we would like to do to improve the treatment of pain in babies.